guys want to start to join on and um, we can get started. We've got day five. This is the last day of uh, my live drawing session for this week. I've been doing these drawing sessions every day, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this is it, at 3.30 every day. Um, and yeah, so it's been pretty full on, but you know, it's good. Now, this is um, the photograph that we're going to be drawing today. Thank you to my um, friend, Tony Mosley, who's an artist and a printmaker, uh, for sharing this photo with me, um, and us. And the reason I chose it was because it's kind of different to all the other animals we've been drawing this week, which are heaps of farm animals. And I thought, well, it's actually kind of got its neck stuck out, and I kind of feel a bit like that. So that's kind of fun. We'll do that. He's sticking his neck out. So, you know, I think, I feel like I've been doing that a little bit this week. Well, totally. This whole experience of doing live stuff has been um, terrifying. New experience. But, um, you know, I'm pleased that I've done it. It's good. I've been sticking my neck out, but it's been good. And I've learned lots of stuff, which is cool. And uh, I'm really, really grateful for you guys all um, jumping on and participating and also being like active participants. Like um, drawing along with me and posting your cool drawings on you know the comment section or up online with the hashtag Let's Draw This Cat Run Lada. So that's just been really amazing, really really cool. So yeah, thank you. All right, so can we do the usual thing, which is maybe you say hi and um, so sorry because I can't tell whether you're here or not unless I see you saying hi. That'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, let's see who's here. Hi, yeah, yeah, fantastic. This is really cool. Um, there's some people that ha actually haven't met before, that, but that have been um, doing the classes like every day. This or well, this, what is it? Drawing sessions every day this week, which is super cool. Um, so that's really awesome. Some people that I regularly teach art classes to or I mentor, um, they've been doing it. It's really great. But it's it's really cool to be able to connect with people in lockdown. Um, I'm lucky to have my gallery and studio at home, so I can keep working but immediately straight away as soon as um, we got locked down I just missed all the people so I thought what can I do so yeah this is really really cool um, now the tech minded people which I'm not uh, maybe you can help us out and uh, how do we like and share the video I'd love you to do that so if you can put that in the comment section so other people can see it that'd be really handy um, I can't see it because I'm talking to you so I don't know from from that end, what it looks like. Um, but um, it would be awesome if you could share these this video, you know, to your family and friends or everywhere. This is cool. It's on the timeline of my Facebook page. So um, all of the videos, all five of them are. So if you've only just cotton on today and you're thinking, man, I missed out on the other ones, um, then don't worry. Start on day one and um, you can catch up. You could even um, post your drawing into the comment section so I can have a look at it too. That'd be really cool. But um, hopefully this is a project that can keep going after I, um, you know, stop doing this online thing. But then saying that, with that in mind, once I've had a rest, because obviously this has been quite a full-on week, um, uh, I might do stuff online again, maybe. <laughs> um, so give me some feedback. How's it been for you doing the drawing? Um, did you like it? Has it been inspiring? Hopefully it has. Maybe some of you have never drawn before or you haven't drawn for ages. Just tell me what it's like. Um, so yeah, that'd be cool. And if you have any ideas for things that you might think, oh, that'd be really cool if Katie did that, then just chuck it down there. Because I'm a pretty open-minded person, I like to think. So um, I'm interested to hear what it is um, that you think. I'd love to think that we'll be out of lockdown soon, but we don't know. So we've got to stay busy and do productive things like this, which we're doing. So, yeah, it's cool. All right, well, with no further ado, we should start making some art and do some drawing. All right, follow me. All righty. These are on my boat sheds. I'm trying to take you for a tour because I normally just make you see the ground, eh? <laughs> All right, I have lots of books around. Get inspired by stuff myself. My wolf painting, what's that one called? Dinner time. You can see my artwork if you want to on my website, katieblundellartist.com. And when we get out of lockdown, maybe you can come and visit me. 
Alrighty. Cool. Okay, I think everybody can see that. The giraffe. Awesome. With his neck stuck out. Okie dokie. And now I want to say, watch this live video. Yes, I do want to. Okay, cool. Oh, Kate's back again. Fantastic. And Lucinda, I'm pleased that you've um, done it all pr pretty much every day that I can think of this week. So thank you. Really, really cool. Okay, we're going to just get stuck in and make some marks, all right? We're going to follow the same process that we have every other day this week. And so remember to start with, we're going to do um, the outline of the draft. And then we're going to do the details of the draft. And then finally, we're going to do the shading of said draft. All right? So that's really cool. We can do that. I think he should be quite fun to draw. Or is it a she? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, never done a draft before. Okay, so um, let's see. Firstly, we need to think if we're going to put this exactly the same size on here, uh, we better figure out that it's going to fit. All right, so if I'm looking at this shape here, I think, well, that's kind of like, if roughly speaking, a triangle. Should we start with that? Okay, so we'll put a little mark here at the bottom. Let's see, it's this far. Let's, we'll put a little mark there where we want the edge to be. And then we'll measure this here again, just like we did last time. We're just measuring from the outside edge how far it should be. And then we're going to do a line up here okay maybe yeah that'll be fine and then we're going to do another line across here and i'm going to do well i could just do another line up here but that seems like maybe i should do maybe i should do the whole head shape so i'm going to go like this and then across i'm just making it up as i go but what i'm just looking at is sort of the basic shape of of your draft okay so let's just measure this here just to check that it's kind of the right place and this here this is very important to see that um, it's the right distance away from the edge and then we can uh, put in also with a neck so the neck is this long so it's going to reach to there so I'm going to put that line down here should give us the angle pretty much and then how wide is our neck it's this way fantastic and then we're gonna put a little mark there it's slightly skinnier isn't it at the top and slightly wider down the bottom cool fantastic okay so we've got a basic shape and I'm using a 3b pencil today because I noticed I don't think you could see the other one very well uh, and some other days it was a bit too light Okay, so there we go. We've got the shapes. Now we're going to try and get the outline of the draft. Okay, so we're going to put, just follow this around. I'm just going to use my finger to show you where I am. And down. And now also looking this in relationship to this, this one is higher. So we're just drawing what we see, not what we know. Not that we know drafts very well, do we? It's a funny looking shape, I agree. Okay, now this ear is inside of there and it's gonna come up and across and down and back. There's an ear. How are we going, people? How are you finding drawing said draft? Okay, then we've got this other bit fold there. Okay, now this little mane is lovely. We'll just put a line there to kind of get the nice little mane. Looks like a polo pony, doesn't it? With its like mane cut. Okay, so you can do that. Just a rough, so we can get an idea of where it goes. Okay, cool. And then now we're going to, we've done this and we've done this. We better come down this side of the face and do the eye area. Comes out, doesn't it, out here? comes right out then it comes down now it's not straight down if you have a look at that line it's actually quite nice got a few bumps in it comes down again and it comes out and we should do his lips while we're here eh? his lips come up there and around here like that cool 
All right, how's it going? Is it starting to look like a giraffe? Or does yours look like another animal already? Okay, so there we go. This is these cheekbones. And it does come all the way back there. That's nice. Okay, and then it comes down. Now, this isn't actually a straight line. It's probably a bit more curved than that. So we can change that shape along the way as we want to. Okay, now is a good time to be a little bit stop and reflective. And also that has got a bit of a bend in it too, hasn't it? So try and get the... Um, make sure that everything is in the right place before we start putting any um, more detail in. Okay. So I'm just rubbing out these lines so we can have a constructive look at them. Okay, so rather than trusting ourselves, we can just measure that that's that close to the top, which is right. And this is that close to the top. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going on this edge. That's fine. Um, and then this one is that far away, which is fine. This has got, got only a little bit at the bottom. That wouldn't want to be any closer, but that's fine. This one, yep, that's fine. And that's good. How are we going, everybody? Do you reckon you've got everything in the right place? It does look like a dinosaur so far. I would agree. Mine does as well. It doesn't matter. Remember, we have to have faith that it'll all be right in the end. Okay. Um, okay, so there we go. We've got those outside outlines sort of sorted. Um, I think now we can start doing the detail. Now, so that we get the most important, one of the most important things would be the eye. Would you agree? Okay, before we do the eye, let's do this here, which is the ear. Cool. Sweet. That's good. And now we can do maybe the nostrils easy, and then we'll move on to the um, eye. Okay, so that's like an oval shape, isn't it? Like a little bit. Is that the other nostril or not? No, because another nostril would be here. So that must be just a black spot. Okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. All right, and so the eyeball, let's do it. It's actually right there, and you can kind of... This is probably not as pronounced. And it's right there. And we can do a little round. It sort of sticks out, actually, doesn't it? How neat. Do you agree with me? Here we are. I'm just going to go right in and make it look like an eye. There we are. Have you got an eye, Kate, in your one? In your dinosaur? Is it starting to look more like a giraffe? Okay, now we've got the ear here. We need to figure out where does this eye go. Okay, now if I'm using this from the bottom of the eye to the bottom of the eye, it's on a slight angle. So I'm going to go there, there, and put it like this. So I'll maybe um, put that line through there like that. And then we can um, make an almondy, what's that shape called? A teardrop. 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 That's nice. Yeah. Here we are. And then, yeah, this is the eyelid. There we go. Mine might be a bit rounded. Let's see how it's not, it's like one finger. Yeah, that's okay. just maybe just a bit too big there we go do you guys put your eyes in do talk to me people because I need to know that you're you're at the same speed how are you going are we good have you got eyeballs I hope so that'd be awesome okay so this is actually completely dark in there so should we just shade it in now we're not following our our same routine but you know when you know the rules, you can break them if you want to. So now you know what to do. We're just going to break that a little bit. There we go. Mine is already looking like a draft, and I'm feeling very happy and much more relaxed. I was nervous today. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's the last day or something. I'm not sure. But I'm getting into the groove now, so that's fine. Okay, now, we've done... Uh, so we've got eyeballs. He's got um, nostrils. He's got everything he needs anatomically. Okay, so now he needs... Um, we need to go through and do all the details now it's best to start at the top here because um, then we don't smudge so much 
So what you're going to do is go through and put all the lines in that you can see. So any line that you can see, just let your hand go and make some marks. Doesn't really make matter if you make too many marks. Doesn't matter at all. You can always rub them out if we want to. We're not pushing too heavily. So yeah, we can change our mind. So just go for it. And like I've said in other days, the more marks you make, the better because the detail doesn't get there by osmosis, right? So I'm trying to have my hand here where I'm moving because then you guys can see where I'm moving. These beautiful wrinkles, isn't I think maybe it is it a she now. I'm not sure. We need to do this part here, which is kind of where it sticks out. Mm-hmm. Yep, because this is in front, and uh, this is wrapping around here like that, and then this comes, what does that do? What's that in relationship to the ear? What is that? Is it like maybe just a mark down here in his cheek? Oh, he's got like, he's got actual cheeks. Do you see that? Do you see that? Cheeks. You'll fit a lot in those cheeks. They're good, good sized cheeks. So we've got to put those cheeks in. It might really help. I see that now. Okay, and then here, up here, is some details up here, like the folds of the skin. Okay, cool. And now we still need to be up here, so I'm going to keep going. Getting distracted because there's so many marks, it's actually quite hard to remember where you are. And who knew they had spots on their faces as well? Didn't know that. Didn't know. But I've never really studied a draft very much. This is where drawing is really cool because you end up looking at things more closely than you do normally, which is really cool. Because we don't normally look closely at much. We just skim over things. This bit here is the dark bit under his eye, and it joins up to his eye. There we are. And so again, some more wrinkles here. Some wrinkles, a beautiful sign. I've got a life well lived. Is it only because I'm getting older and I'm getting wrinkles that I say this? I think so. Okay, that's that. And I'm going to do these little dots in here. We're going to just do the outside shape so we can start to figure out where everything is. Okie dokie. This comes around here and there's a big line going there and then a really big line coming around here and meets up to this dot. Okay, and then there's a bit of a fold down here one of those cool lips. I've, I actually have at the zoo seen a giraffe eat a carrot and it was totally freaking me out because they have really long tongues. Has anyone seen a giraffe tongue? Surprisingly freakily long. Okay, and what we're going to talk about today, I think, with the focus with the art making here, is um, mark making. It seems like the obvious thing to look at when we are doing so many marks, you know. And this thing, this uh, an this animal is like, I guess it's got these dots to camouflage, right? But put out of context, it just stands out, I think. Okay, so I've come to this part here. And now I'm going to come up to this top bit here and do a line there, and a little dot there, and a little dot there. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to come over to the neck and start putting some marks in. Awesome. Are your eyes in? Okay, great. 
I'm pleased, Kristen, that your eyes are in. Your um, awesome as um, time lapse video of one of the drawings I think you did was yesterday. Um, I put it on my Instagram or my what is it? My stories. Shared that because that was amazing, and everyone's been like complimenting you, cousin. So well done, fantastic! You're an awesome drawer. That looks really cool. So I look forward to seeing what you do today. Remember, I'm totally okay with being outdrawn. Try to be anyway. I can handle it. Um, here we go. I don't normally actually make art when I'm teaching. I just sort of talk, hey eh, guys? And other people can help other people make art. And very rarely will I... I'll do maybe a demonstration. But I really just generally make art when no one is around. <laughs> so this is part of the, oh my goodness, freakiness thing. Drawing in front of you guys. So this is my disclaimer. This will, this is possibly not the best draft drawing I'll ever do. Some of you have been so cool. You've been saying that, that, um, that you have been making the best drawings you've ever done, which is, it's very cool, very inspiring. People are trying to go and chat to me and like chats, and I'm like, no, now is not a time to chat, people. I'm busy, busy. Stay focused. Okay, if you're getting all these dots, I mean, wow, it would be amazing if we got all of them, wouldn't it? We can only try. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I want to go and put my fringe in, you know, my, um, what's it called? Mane. So I'm going to kind of give them, I so badly need a haircut. What about you guys? Do you need a haircut? Holy. I trimmed it myself. My hairdresser will be horrified. Things are looking bad. It kind of, you know how I have like a kind of a mohawk, it kind of flopped over at the top. And that was more of a, like a comb over than a mohawk, so I had to try and, you know, fix that a little bit. Okay, here we are. Look, he's a beauty. I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. Have you guys put all your details in? Oh, okay, I'm so... Oh, yeah, somebody has to go and do their schoolwork. Okay, okay, I totally understand, and thank you for coming. Maybe you can catch up on the weekend when you finish your schoolwork. Totally, we have to prioritise. Um, I did make it at 3.30 this, um, because I teach uh, the art classes usually at 3.30 after school, um, hoping that people have finished. But also, I know that the home learning is pretty full on, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer than, than a day. I get it. But you got the weekend to look forward to. So that'll be cool. Okay, so there we go. Um, I've got, what's it called? His mane in. Okay, now I'm looking at the bits that I haven't done that are empty. Straight away I see the ear here, because my ear hasn't been um, done at all. So I'm going to put some of this black detail in the ear. And then there's a fold down here. And this ear has almost got like a lip on it. Nothing is ever straight, Katie, so don't make it straight. Uh, yep. Okay, that's kind of good. It's nice to be a little bit organic. The lines can be sort of too straight. That's a problem. Okay, if that line is there, I feel like there needs to be some folds down here. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, this is detail. Now, we've got to look for his flaws that make him beautiful. So, let's look onto the nostrils. See these little dots here? Aren't they gorgeous? Um, these are like, you know, hair follicles and little dots and stuff. So, you can put these in that you can see. Just those little marks. Again, this is where we're varying our marks. Uh, maybe I should take a break and just take um, take you through some marks here. So when we're, we're going to try and use a variety of marks on this um, draft. So if I'm thinking of marks we can make. Okay, I'm going to show you. Okay, we could do here like this, like little bits like this, couldn't we? All right? We could do dots like this to be like um, 
you know, for his, um, what's it called? His snot, his sn snout, his nose. Okay, maybe those bits like that. Um, we could do some cross hatching at, at some parts, right? That'd be cool. We could do some shading really dark. We could do some shading a bit lighter. We could do some really light shading. We could use the rubber to rub back in and get some marks that way, can't we? And what else can we do? Um, we can do mark making. Okay, we can do, we can like shade from dark to light like we were the other day. Okay, that'd be cool. We can do broken marks. That'd be nice. You know, we can do marks in all different directions. Mm-hmm. We can do squiggly marks. Yep. What other ones have we got? Um, I think you get the general idea. So what, how do I get the idea of what mark to use? Well, I let the picture tell me what it wants. So when um, I'm doing the, the main, then that's definitely like this sort of mark, right? Right? Yeah, definitely. And when I'm doing the nostrils, that might be little dots or little marks like this. Yeah. Okay. When I'm doing shading, I might go one way and then I might go the other way, build it up slowly over time. Because this is like fur or hair, we want to be able to see that, you know. And I've talked to you about directional lines before, but we'll say that again. So for the neck here, it, I imagine, well, what way would his hair go? Is anyone a horse rider? I'm sure they'd be the same as a horse. Where would his hair go? It almost looks like it goes up in that part. And then, I don't know, maybe it goes round. Can somebody please tell me the direction of the hairs on the neck of the giraffe? Since I can't see them and I'm going to have to make them up otherwise. So, because, yeah, that's an emergency. What do we think we're going to do for the hairs on the neck of the giraffe? Tell me, tell me. Okay, we're going to come back to our drawing now. Boom. Okay, so now we've done um, the details. Now we're going to start with the shading. Okay, so we can um, kind of remember putting some more details as we're shading, but we're just going to get stuck into it because um, we can. So firstly, if we squint our eyes and we look at the images black, grey and white, we're going to start with all the dark bits. Okay, we're going to start at the top of the image because then we won't smudge so much. And um, let's just start by shading this ear bit in quite dark because it is dark. So I've kind of made that shape so I know where to shade in. So I'm going to do just that. Look at that. Already done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, cool. And then this edge of the ear is also really dark. Here, so I'm going to shade that in as well. The wonderful thing about doing this dark shading first, I mean, some people will maybe shade light first. I'm not sure. Tell me, but... Um, the good thing about this dark first, I find, is you can kind of um, figure out where everything is because you're creating the form, you know. Okay, there we are. So that's enough on the ear. All right. Oh, so Victoria's saying the hairs look like they're going down the neck. Okay, we'll follow your instruction, like... Hopefully, that's right. <laughs> I'll hold the straps, you know, it'll be on your head. On your head be it, as they say. No, we'll just do it. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, um, so we're going to shade in this top of the... What is these things? Why? What possible purpose could these things have? Why would... Maybe it's to stop it from hitting its head on the branches if he's going up for some snacks. I don't know. What's the top of this... Uh, What's the use of these like little mounds on the top of its head? Please, somebody tell me this. Okay, that's the dark one. We're going to move over to another dark one. I'm still waiting for someone to tell me what's the, what's the dark bits. What's these moundy bits on the top of the head used for? Question mark. Okay, I'm really happy with him, her there. He, she looks great. There we are. Okay, um, so we've done the two dark bits there. We've done the ear. Any other dark bits? Yep, over here there is. See, we're quite methodical about it. Well, I am. Sort of process base, you know. So we don't get lost if we follow the 
the road signs. All right. So that's an ear. And then we've got this, which we can now make totally black. And it also can have a bit of a squiggle in it, like it actually does. And it's actually a bit deeper in this part here. She's beautiful, isn't she? Okay, and then this, um, this also gets shaded up dark here. And this is where we can do some directional marks there. Okay, so now um, that is the... So I'm just trying to figure out what you're saying here, Victoria. They are, they're heavy so they can hit the other, like the main, oh, so it's like almost like, um, it's like a warfare kind of a thing, maybe. It's like this, these are useful for battle. This is amazing. The things you find out. Who knew we were going to learn so much? Thank you, Victoria. Okay. So let's stay focused. What are we up to? We've got that dark, that dark, this dark. Okay, this bit here is quite dark. Where is it? It's over here. We can make it dark. We just shade by pushing pretty hard for this really dark stuff. All right, and that's that done. Okay, now we're gonna come down to the nostril because that's pretty dark. So we can shade it again as dark as you can push. Cause you know, I guess I'm pretty prone to drama, aren't I? Let's go for it. Okay. Um, that's pretty dark in here. The thing that looks like a nostril but isn't. Um, this bit down here on the lip, we can do that too dark. That's all dark under here. Beautiful. And comes right up to this part here, but it doesn't meet. And then this bit is um, like a nice little light line down there. Cool bananas. Awesome. I can't even say that word word out loud, but of what these things are called, but you know, it's, it's interesting all the same. Okay, so now this is dark, this is dark, that's dark. Okay, good. Um, now we can, what should we do next? I feel like we might be making a, like a mess. So let's continue with this mess making and take a little break for a second. Once we know the rules, like we do now about um, the outline, the, sh what is it? The detail and the shading, we can kind of start to break those rules a little bit. So what we're gonna do right now is um, actually, cause we haven't really done the backgrounds in many of them. Let's just draw the background in, take a break, figure out where this background is gonna be and just draw the lines lightly because I'm going to, I've got an idea. Because you know how he's meant to look like he's camouflaging into the background? Let's maybe make him look like he's going to do that. Okay, I don't necessarily like when it's merging into the eyeball like this. So I'm just going to drop it down a little bit because I'm an artist so I can do whatever I want. So can you. So we're just drawing the sort of outlines of the trees. Okay, and then we'll draw this line here coming up and maybe a little bit of this, this little canopy of tree. Okay, cool. Now what we're gonna do is, um, so that's the ground, the foreground, this is the mid ground and the sky, you know, the background and then this, the, the um, uh, sky. Now what we're going to do for fun, and um, normally remember I say we don't smudge, but I think I just think like it'll be quite cool to smudge the sky. Okay, so let's try and shade it, first of all. Now because remember I'm a total smudge amateur, so you guys will be better at this than me, because I have never been able to do this, been trained not to smudge. So I'm going to be like first, this is the first try, but um, I'm going to just put this uh, tone down so I want you to do the same and I am choosing to do it horizontally these marks another choice would be to do it vertically but I think because this is a landscape 
I'm naturally doing it horizontally. We're doing this now. We're taking a break and doing this now because it could make a bit of mess, couldn't it? And my eyes were going funny because I'm looking at all those different bits of details. So let's take a break from that and just do this fun smudging for a second. I think it'll look cool. Live dangerously. We're just giving it a go. Worst thing that could happen, you know, it's not our favourite drawing. Best thing that could happen, we love it. Okay, so now this is where I guess I smudge. Is that all I do? I just use my fingers? I'm going to do it. Oh, it works. Huh. Look at that. Eesh. Kind of is a weird sensation, isn't it? So you can smudge over the landscape a little bit because we can use a rubber to fix it up. Oh, this is actually, I can see why people like smudging. This is really fun. It's very therapeutic. It's very um, uh, tactile. Are you all smudging with me? <laughs> fun we have. It's like a cooking show or something. <laughs> oh, except you actually get to do it like right straight away. Okay, that's pretty weird and my fingers like gonna need to be washed 12 times but I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm gonna use the rubber straight away and just tidy up my edge. You see how I've kind of got that funny edge? Okay, that was really cool man. So there's room for everything, and I'm quite capable of changing my mind. I kind of think that, that this looks quite cool, the smudge look. Now, because there's some clouds in the sky, we can use the rubber and practice drawing into the um, drawing with the rubber, because this is the whites of the clouds. So we're not making it up, we're actually drawing what we see, but we're using the materials to help us make what, what we need to make. Work with what you have, people. Work with what you have. Celebrate. And we hopefully have a rubber. We hopefully have the ability to smudge. Unless someone doesn't like getting dirty. Then you can just make those marks without smudging. So, um, does that convincingly start to look like clouds? Do you have clouds, people? All right, you give it a shake. Oh, hi Linda, do you have clouds? Okay, there we go. Look, we've kind of done this really nice um, gestural marks in our drawing already. It's coming alive, you know? Really good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, tell me, have you got clouds? I need to know. Speak to me, people. I hope so. Okay, now, um, because we've kind of um, been working on the background, and shall we keep going on the background a little bit? Um, we can just make it dark through here. And we might, yeah, we're going to shade in the background. Because it is dark here, we're going to make it dark here. Be true to the drawing. I'm doing again my marks horizontally so that it feels like a landscape. Okay. People often say, what am I meant to do in the background? Well, I like to let the idea and image talk to me. Does that sound mad? Probably. But that's what I do, okay? So you let what you're looking at talk to you and tell you what to do. Just have to listen. Okay. Now I'm trying, I'm gonna, oh well, I don't know that I want too much actually detail in the background. 
so I'm not going to put too much in. I'm just going to keep going with this sort of gradient tone. There we are. And then I'm going to come over here and do under here. And I'm see, I'm almost making, wow, I'm making like camouflage background. Like it looks like um, an army jumper or something. Do you see that? There's like dark bits and lighter bits. Cool. Okay, this is good. So I'm happy with this. Because it's starting to have a bit of an idea. Which you know I love. I'm an ideas artist. So concepts um, make me happy. I always like it if there's a bit of a concept in an artwork. Because I think it... Mm, I believe it makes people, you know, engage with the artwork potentially them a bit more and they might come back to it and, you know, I think it's just helpful. So I'm deliberately making this quite flat so that it doesn't um, fight with the foreground of the draft. So I'm not actually completely copying what's there I'm kind of more abstractly copying I'm looking at the dark parts and I'm shading that in dark and I'm leaving the lighter bits light um, so that you've kind of got um, like a tapestry or you know different marks there okay and then for the foreground I'm just gonna maybe a bit more lightly keep maybe with these same horizontal marks but not do as many of them because it's the foreground There we are. So we have dealt with the background today. All right. That's cool, right? How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty happy with my draft. I hope I don't wake up and go, oh man, he's got a wiggly eye or something like that. But at the moment I'm thinking, yeah, it's all good. So you've got some clouds. Hi, Michelle. I'm pleased you've got some clouds. That's good. Thank you for telling me that. Okay, now we've kind of done this beautiful background. Um, and now we're going to uh, finish shading the, what's it called? Draft. Okay. So we've done the dark, darkest bits of the draft, which is great. Um, we can always go over again and make them darker still, which we will do maybe at the end. But for now, we don't need to do any more. Okay. Um, we now need to do the mid-tones. So this is all the uh, brownie bits, isn't it? If we squint our eyes. So, um what pencil have I got this is a really it is a really good thing you can do everything with this 3b so I'm just going to keep using it um so maybe if you just want to go and buy yourself one pencil I'm thinking the 3b is pretty good because someone was doing a drawing um with just a hb in fact a few people have and they're complaining they're like oh no and remember I said I'm not a pencil snob but then if you try and do like it's harder to do dark shading and all that sort of stuff so I feel for you, but, you know, as long as you're not making um, a draft out of Vegemite, you should consider yourself lucky, you know? <laughs> and even if you did, I'd be, like, quite, I'd be quite happy if you made a draft out of Vegemite. I'd be, I'd be pro then. I have, have you seen those drawings um, that people do out of, like, things in the pantry? Like M&Ms or something like this? It's quite fun. So now, if I'm going there, I'm actually going toning that. I'm kind of getting lost in my own drawing, are you? So we're looking for these mid-tones here. You really don't want me to start singing, that would be terrible. Don't allow that to happen. Okay. Mm. 
it's really good to have done this detail already so we know where we are right and depending on how dark it is we just shade in different pressures Cool. Good. Now you can see why I think I did this that smudging idea earlier because we're kind of just making a bit of mess. Um, we might need to use the rubber because we've um, some people actually put a piece of paper down, but I've never done that. But I suppose you could. Maybe I should. She looks very relaxed. What are we going to do here? It's got to be white here and then darker behind it. Okay, there we go. That top part of the face is looking quite good. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to do these dark bits here. These are drafts. I think this is going to be fantastic. I think this is going to be a great way to end the week and go into the weekend with some cool as drafts. And this is um, kind of a flat tone here. We don't, we don't really want it to merge with that. Uh, merge is a real pain. We don't want it to merge with the background. So see it's a little bit lighter on that edge. We're going to leave that there. There's this dot. I'm getting confused with my dots. Dots. There's that dot and then there's this bit which is a bit darker still. There we are. And then there's this. Okay and then there's this other mark here. Okay you can still see the edge which is nice. Yep that's good. And then this bit is quite dark in here, yep. And then we're going to come down here with a bit of shading there. It's kind of rounded, so we can kind of make his snores a little rounded. By making the marks go round, it's fine. This bit here is quite dark. Alright, how we going? Okay, I haven't heard from you since the clouds. Remember, I'm a bit delayed in what I hear, so keep telling me how you're feeling. Have you got any questions for me? Now would be a good time to ask questions. I'm looking forward to a relaxing weekend. So now is the time to ask you questions. All right. We want to kind of treat, keep that sh those shapes and don't lose the shapes of these things we're drawing. Because it would be easy to, wouldn't it? Because they're very much shapes. And we're trying to do her proud by copying it pretty exactly and stick within those lines. This is a little bit like colouring in at this stage. Cool. Good. There seems to be a massive gap here. Okay. So there needs to be um, some shading through here. So I'll make it a bit directional. Just all in one go. There we are. Yep. So it's a little bit darker through there. That's good. I believe it. If I believe it, then maybe you will too. We'll fake it till we make it, eh, guys? Okay. That's good. Um, I'm really happy with that. I think that will be enough for now. This bit is actually lighter, isn't it? So we're going to leave it a bit lighter. It does have a little bit of tone in here, so we'll put that in. And then we also need to do these marks. Where is that? It's here, apparently. I think I might have missed out a spot. I did. 
put it in. We are going to get stuff wrong. I think I have, but that's all right. Oh, did I do two, this two spots? Oh, look, I'm lost in it, but that's okay. There's that one, and then there's, oh, is it that one? Oh, okay, well, a couple more extra spots won't kill her, I guess. But what we don't want to lose is the cheekbone. There we are. That's all right. There we go. Okay, now there's that. There's that. There's that. Imagine if we got some little kid to count the spots. They'd be there for a while, wouldn't they? Be a good maths project. I've been doing obviously home learning, you can tell, can't you? <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, Lucinda. Thanks for coming. I understand you've got to walk the dog. Good on you. Have a great weekend and thank you for coming. I'd love to see your draft. It might be finished already. You might be faster than me today. That would be good. Okay, so I've got those marks, that marks. Where is this one? Let's go here. So I think it was uh, Victoria suggested that our neck goes this way. So let's make all our our shading, uh, sorry, our marks go down that way. Yep. Keep our spots, keep our spots. Doesn't matter if you got one extra spot or a few extra spots, but do practice trying to make it pretty accurate. It's all part of that observational thing. Not many people can draw things better by not looking at something. Most people. Um, would have to draw something looking at something real um, and that's totally normal people often say oh especially kids oh, I don't need to look at that I know what it looks like yeah but you kind of probably don't know really what it looks like do you so if you're looking at something when you're drawing it you're pretty much always going to get a better drawing in my opinion if you can take the photo yourself, that is really also important to feel like you have ownership over um, the work, obviously, because you have taken the photo, but also that you might have met the animal um, that you're trying to draw. And remember, this is kind of like portraiture, and portraiture, you're trying to get the essence of something, and you're more likely to get that if you've actually had an experience with that animal or thing also really works really well when you're drawing in the real it's quite hard with animals i find i do end up taking i spend time with these spend times like with animals when i'm doing that drawing them but i also take photographs because um i make sketches and stuff but then i do use photographs because they move animals move right and so you kind of want to um capture them when you want to capture them um, but saying that with inanimate objects, still life and things that don't move, it's really awesome to draw them in the flesh. Now where is the light coming from? The light comes from the sky. This might sound like a very obvious thing to say, but it's something that we should think about. Because this is a natural lighting, so it does come from the sun. It's not the case for all situations. Um, so we're going to have to think, okay, the light's coming from above. And so underneath here is going to be darker and this is going to be lighter. All right. Okay. So that's awesome. So let's make it a bit darker underneath here. So we're going to put the start line in here, which it is. 
Okay, and we've also got this line here, which is, I guess, is it its breathing pipe? I just want to say that it is. I feel like it should be. Some lines in here. Lines down here. Maybe it's when he's folding his long neck. Something's got to give. There we are. It surely looks like he's turning now, which is great. Okay, um, let's uh, do some shading here. And we're doing it in this directional shape, directional way. And kind of, I'm doing it quite loose, but you can do it in whatever style you want. And because it's dark, it's darker around here. All right. It's also really dark here. So I'm going to do a gradient shade here. Yep, you try that. And we can do another one here. And they, seemingly another one here for some reason, I don't know why. But that's definitely giving him the feeling like his neck is moving around. This comes right up here, good. And then we can draw some dark bits in the neck. So this is gonna be, is it darker down the bottom? It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. can do kind of like you know polo pony texture and you can look at the direction where am I here there it goes a bit longer and it comes and it goes sideways there like that and then it goes up and down and it almost looks like it folds over there we are cool and um, we're going to make it a bit darker down here, because it is. So you can build up on your shading. You don't have to just go once. You can go uh, more than once on your shading. She's still looking like a giraffe, everybody. Hope so. It actually looks darker inside of some of these dots. So I'm doing that. Because we've kind of got the form now. Awesome. Okay, how's he looking? Looking chicken? He's looking good. I don't want to end up with just lines there, so I'm breaking that up. Let's try and avoid that. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah. It's quite dark. I've got two options. Rub it out and make it lighter. We'll make it darker. What do we want to do? Oh, we'll leave it like that for now. Um, okay, now um, I've got to do just making it a little bit. I feel like we've done pretty much heaps, but um, we just want to um, just define him a little bit before we go. So just come back in and in the face where you want to uh, make it more obvious, do. So that you pick up on some of the dark bits. Alright. Uh, and here. He's a complicated beast, isn't he? So these last little details are great. I mean, I think, to be honest, this is actually the kind of drawing that you could do for days, to be honest. But we're not going to do it for days.
Does anyone see anything dramatic that I've missed? Okay, I reckon I might be pretty close and calling it a session. Let's just do a couple more moves. You can see all the massive variety of marks that we've made today is heaps, isn't it? Which I think will put you in good stead. I hope that you keep drawing. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been fun doing this project. It's definitely put me outside my comfort zone, but that's a good thing to do, I think. Um, so yeah, be good. I hope the rest of um, lockdown treats you well, you know, and um, hope to see you on the other side soon. Okay, so um, thank you very, very much. And what you can do for me is uh, like and share this so that more people can do it on, on a rainy day if they feel like it. Um, and yeah, thanks. It's been a pleasure. All right. See you later, everybody. Uh, how do I turn this off? Here we are.